Hello everyone, we are here at the Apopka Amphitheater here in Orlando, Florida. My name is Jenna. And my name is Ryan. We are so excited to be with you all today. We want to encourage you to go ahead and write where you're watching from in the comments below. If you guys have a prayer request, we want to be here and pray with you for today. We are so excited for what the Lord is about to do today. We want to encourage you, get your communion elements ready, get prepared. We're all gonna take communion at today's service. Yeah, we're super expectant for what the Lord is going to do. There's thousands of people that flew in from all over the United States to come sit at the feet of Jesus with us. So we want you guys as well. You're our extended family. You guys are watching from all over the nation. So we are super excited. We pray the Holy Spirit fills every home, every vehicle through every advice in Jesus, uh, every device in Jesus name. We are just super expectant for what the Lord's going to do. You know, Jenna and I both have the privilege of being part of Jesus school. Um, you know, we're both in our third year now that we are help leading. We're we're on staff here at Jesus Image, and so it's it's beautiful what the what the Lord has done. But why don't you share your story a little bit, Jenna, of what God has done over these last few years? Yes, I was actually a classmate with Ryan in the very first Jesus School year. I'm here from Orlando, and when I felt the Lord called me to Jesus School, it wasn't that long of a commute, but it was really exciting how the Lord just tugs from people all over the world. And for me personally, it was probably about a five minute commute to go to Jesus School right in my backyard. And I went there, but little did I know my life was about to change forever. Uh, just the teachers, the speakers, the community and the family that I got from being in Jesus School has marked me. And I went from first year into second year. And now, like Ryan said, leading third year. And it's still every year is just blowing us away what the Lord is doing. And I get to be with the first year students. Ryan, you get to be with the yes, second year students. Yes. And Ryan was a little bit further away than Orlando. Where did you come from? Yeah, I'm uh, originally from California. So on the opposite side of the nation, um, um, you know, I was obviously working full time. I have a family. I got four children. I'm married. Um, you know, so when I first heard, you know, the call to come to Jesus school, um, man, I had all the emotions. I saw all the stuff in the natural of how this looked impossible. But I know, you know, with God, all things are possible. So I started feeling that little nudge with inside of me saying, you have to come. And so I talked to my wife. We got to pray together. Uh, she felt the same way that I was to come to Orlando, Florida, while she stayed at home with the kids, full-time job. Um, as soon as I said yes to that, somebody came up to me. They paid for my airfare all year long. So I flew back and forth across the nation for about three weeks, uh, every three weeks or so, to go see my family. And so it was such an amazing opportunity and a privilege. Uh, and halfway through first year, we felt that God said to uproot from where we were from to plant our lives right here in the soil uh, in Orlando with uh, the family of Jesus Image, with Michael and Jessica. And it's been such an honor to be a part of that ever since then, just to see what God has done in my girls' lives since we've been here. My son, my wife, my wife um, helps out as well with Jesus Image. She's on staff. And so it's just amazing to see these past years what, what a yes can do uh, in such a short little time and it's beautiful and so if you guys feel that call that nudge as well we're actually having a preview day um, this Monday coming up April 5th um, so if you guys feel hey man I feel the Lord is is calling me to Orlando to Jesus school and to give him my yes well this day is beautifully geared for you guys we have tons of students uh, that right now are in our environments that said yes during that day preview day they felt God say this is home this is your next season in life so we want to encourage you guys as well this coming Monday April 5th. If you guys are encouraged, you guys feel like, man, God is tugging on my heart to come, I would say come. You get to hear from our leaders, Michael and Jessica. They pour their hearts out. You get a little sneak peek at sitting at the feet of Jesus with us in his presence. And so it's just beautiful that we get this amazing opportunity. Um, we also have an addition that we have added this year. It's called House of Bethany. It's beautiful with the arts, uh, singing, just worshiping, pouring our oil out on the feet of Jesus. Uh, Jenna, why don't you talk a little bit about that and what God is going to do? Yes. Yeah, so House of Bethany is brand new this year. We haven't had it any other year. And my sister Dom is one of the teachers at House of Bethany, along with Michael, Jessica Koulianos. Um, John Wilde is going to be there. Pastor Benny, you're going to learn from him. Uh, amazing musicians and teachers from around the world. And House of Bethany for us is when you apply and get accepted into Jesus School, then you get the opportunity to apply for Bethany. So it's an extension of Jesus School within uh, the school environment. So it's those who feel called 
I wanna lay my life down. I wanna be a worshiper. I wanna know more about worship, more about the Lord in this way. Come and check out Bethany. You'll see at the bottom of the screen where you can find more information about Bethany as well. And then in addition to Bethany, for those of you who can't come, who are out of the country and all around the world, we do have JSO. Yeah, so that's Jesus School Online. So there are extended family. It's amazing. I mean, people from all over the world are actually uh, uh, getting on Jesus School Online. They're taking the classes. It's, we've heard testimonies, I mean, across the board of what God is doing in their lives. So they get they get a sneak peek at Jesus School. Uh, they get exclusive content going out to all the world. So if you guys are feeling, man, maybe I can't uproot my life and plan it right there in Orlando, I can do it from my home. I could do it from my car, from any device. Uh, we have our Jesus School Online. All that information that we just gave is at JesusImage.tv. You can find it all on there, obviously on the bottom of your guys' screen as well. So we want to encourage you guys. If you feel like, hey, I can't make it, well, this is a beautiful opportunity that you guys could still be a part of what we're doing. How many of you guys know there is no time or space in the Spirit? Uh, the same Holy Spirit that is here and what He's doing over here is absolutely in your guys' homes as well. So you guys can find that option as well, Jesus School Online. We just want to encourage you guys in that. Um, and what's amazing about that, we do have a second year student here, uh, Amy Mashi. She's actually part of that Jesus School Online. She also helps uh, dance right here. Uh, she's coming up right now. So here's Amy, everybody. Hi. Yes, how you doing, Amy? I'm good, how are you? Amazing. So she helps uh, dancing as well on Thursdays and Sundays, right? Yeah. You help out. Um, and then you're part of the Jesus School Online as a presence group leader. Yes. But you're also a second year student at Jesus School. So tell us a little bit about what God has done over these last few years at Jesus School for you. Yes. Yeah, so the Lord called me about two years ago to come to move to Orlando and apply to Jesus School. And um, my whole life, I grew up in church and stuff, so I heard about Jesus, I heard about the gospel, but coming into Jesus School, coming a part of this family, I really actually met the person of Jesus. And what I would say is I got to see Jesus in all forms, like Jesus the bridegroom, Jesus the healer, Jesus the king, um, the father, friend. And um, I would just encourage you, if you want to be in an environment that is saturated at the presence, at the feet of Jesus, come and just fall in love with him himself and with that you get amazing family amazing friends like people who genuinely love you and genuinely are family Amen. so it's it's been amazing yeah tell us a little bit about jesus school online you're obviously one of our presence group leaders on there you guys get you get to see uh, students from all over the world how's that been for you yeah it's been really fun um i have the opportunity to do jesus School online as a presence group leader so i get to experience the hunger from across the world is unreal. People from Australia, Brazil, um, I have people in Canada currently right now, and then another girl who is in um, Bolivia who actually flew to it's come amazing. to Jesus School in Orlando. But the hunger just to be in the presence, whether it's in person or um, online, has just honestly burned my heart to crave more of the Lord. So it's been amazing. And plus I get extra teachings yeah. so it's been great that's right and she's also going to be part of house of bethany uh she's one of our dancers right here at jesus school and jesus image so what are you expecting for god to do through house of bethany you yeah know? um so house of bethany it, it's been a place where um, our worship team and dom's heart and all of the leaders is when Mary poured her oil at the feet of Jesus at the house of Bethany, it's the sacrificial offering of praise that she wanted to give Jesus everything, that she split open her, her expensive oil that cost her everything and just gave it all at the feet of Jesus to where she was wiping um, her tears onto on with her hair. Like she was wiping um, her her... She was wiping the feet of Jesus with her hair like she was so in love with him. And so the fact that we can do that through painting, through dancing, through singing, through through any instrument to give something to the Lord is something that we're really hoping and crying out for with um, House of Bethany. Yeah, amen. Uh, you know, right here at Jesus School, we are a worshiping school. We just, we love the Lord. You know, the Bible says to love the Lord God with all your hearts, with all your mind, and with all your soul. Yeah. And it's like when I came to Jesus School, it was just like one big revelation of that yeah. that God hit me with that. We're going to minister to Jesus. We're going to love him. Yeah. It's what it's all about. It's who we are as a Jesus people is we love Jesus. We sit at his feet and we stare at the beauty of him. Amy, what are you expecting for tonight? I mean, on Good Friday that we get to gather here, 
with amazing people from all over the world. What are you looking forward to? Come, Lord Jesus, come. Um, our crucified king that bore the cross so that we could be one with him. I was actually reading this morning um, when he was in the garden of Gethsemane and he was praying to the father saying, where I'm going, I want them to come with me. And I, I just, I just am praying for tonight that people encounter the Lord like never before, that the presence of Jesus falls tonight like never before, that we get to offer something so beautiful to Amen. him tonight because he offered his entire body. He offered Offered and gave it all at the cross. So if we could just for a minute give him everything tonight and worship him with everything we have so that the presence of Jesus could be felt and that families who've never done this before and, and the lost sons and daughters and parents who've never done this before can experience the tangible presence of Jesus. So that is my, that's my hope. Amen. Amen. Yeah. So if you guys are watching, which you guys are, and you guys are going to continue to watch us tonight. Why don't we just really position our hearts to the Lord? Tonight is a special and holy night. I mean, the reason why we get to gather today here, Amy, is because his blood that was shed. Yeah. The Bible says that the blood of Jesus has brought us into his very own presence. We get to be, have this beautiful opportunity to love the Lord because his blood that was shed, the holes in his hands and the holes in his feet and the crown on his head, that it was a beautiful door, an invitation into walking with him, to living with him. You know, we're alive. Our reason for being is for him. And we get this beautiful opportunity today to be with Jesus. Yeah. So why don't you pray? And, and I'll continue to pray after you pray. We're just going to pray over the people. Yeah. Just pray over their, their homes, yeah. their children. Yeah. Uh, be expectant for what God is going to do tonight and everything that he's going to do. So go ahead, Amy. Yeah. So, Father, we just thank, thank you, you so much for the honor and the privilege to be here, Lord. Thank we you. thank you for the opportunity to gather together in your name to worship you, King yes. Jesus. Father, I thank you for everyone watching, every family member, every brother and sister and mother and daughter. Lord, I just thank you for, for the tangible Holy Spirit, the presence of you, Lord, to fill their homes, to fill their cars, to fill their devices, Lord, that they would come expectant. Father, I pray for your presence, Lord, to fill this entire the, um, theater, Lord, this entire land, Jesus, that we are hungry, Lord. Yeah, Father, just like Bethany poured everything out, Thank the you, most Jesus. expensive offering, everything that she owned in that one, that one alabaster jar, Lord, would we be able to do that tonight, Lord? I thank you, Jesus. I thank you for families to gather together in love, to gather together in harmony, that they would experience the crucified King, the crucified cross, Lord. I thank you, Jesus, for the power of the cross, the power of the blood, and what you did, Father. So we just thank you. We thank you for tonight, Lord. We thank you for each and every one of those family members watching. Um, every single person watching, Lord, would you just encounter them, that there would not be one heart lost, that they would experience every yes, bit of who you, you are, that every heart would feel you, Jesus. Lord, we thank you. We bless the families watching as well, Lord. We bless their families, Jesus, and we worship you tonight, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah. Lord, we just thank you for every home. Yeah. Everyone that is watching right now via live stream, I pray, Holy Spirit, that you flood their homes, flood the rooms that they're in. Holy Spirit, we thank you, Jesus, that there is no time or space in the Spirit. God, we thank you, Jesus, in advance for every healing that's going to take place tonight. In this moment, in this time in history, that every salvation, every transformation of life, God, every encounter with you, Jesus, first love to be birthed within us once again. God, let us never forget what took place today. Let us never forget, Lord, that blood that poured out of your veins, Jesus, and from your hands and from your head and from your feet, from your body, from your back that was split open. Let us never forget, Jesus. God, we thank you that we are healed and whole in Jesus' name. God, we see you. We see you on the cross, Jesus. Let us never forget. We love you, Lord. We are in expectation of what God is going to do tonight. We thank you for everyone watching, Jesus. Bless their children. Bless their homes. I plead the blood of Jesus over their homes now. I plead the blood of Jesus over their minds now. Cover us, Jesus. We love you. 
Let our hearts be positioned towards you and you alone tonight. God, we thank you, Jesus, that today is the first day of the rest of our lives. We love you. We are in expectation of what God is going to do. In your mighty, precious name we pray. Amen. We are super excited, guys. We are going to go now live to the event. We love you guys. We'll see you guys in a little bit.
you to pour yourself out. This is the day that Jesus hung on a tree for the ones he loved, for the lost. While we were yet sinners, Christ died for us and gave himself up for us. I want you to pour yourself out. Pour yourself out. Don't wait to be led. Don't wait for somebody to tell you what to do.
Come on, every hand lifted, every hand lifted, every voice. Alleluia.
Just lift your hands, begin singing in the Spirit. Come on. Come on, every voice, every voice. Jesus, we've come tonight to thank you and to worship you. Thank you for the cross. Thank you for your blood. Thank you, precious Lamb of God, for your great mercy. Begin thanking him right now. Those of you in your homes, begin thanking him. Those of you here in the amphitheater, begin thanking the Lord for the precious blood of Jesus. That's it, that's it. Begin thanking the Lord. We enter his gates with thanksgiving in our hearts. Jesus, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you for every wound. Thank you for the crown of thorns. Jesus, thank you for the hole in your side that brings us to your precious heart. Sing in the Spirit, sing in the Spirit, sing in the Spirit. That's it, that's it, that's it. Lord, be enthroned in the praises of your people tonight. Be enthroned, be enthroned, be enthroned. for comprehension. comprehension. Sing choir, come on. Like nothing ever seen or heard. Who can grasp your infinite wisdom? Who can fathom the depths of your love? Beautiful. You are beautiful beyond description. Majesty. Oh, majesty. His throne above. Oh, come on, everyone, 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 everyone. I stand, I stand in love of you. I stand. Tell him, tell him. To marvelous for words. Worship you, Jesus. We praise tonight. 
Nothing ever seen or heard. Like nothing ever seen or heard. Who can grasp your infinite wisdom? Who can fathom the depths of your love? Keep singing, keep singing. He's filling our praise. He's filling our praise. Majesty. Majesty. Come on, every voice, every instrument, everyone, everyone, everyone. here come on just begin to love him out loud out loud begin to love him let the Holy Spirit sing through you that's it that's it let that river flow let that river flow just close your eyes forget about everything your hands to the Lord and just begin to bless him. Disconnect from this crazy world and look to Jesus right now. Oh yeah, sing in the spirit choir, come on. Holy, 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 holy is the Lord. Holy, 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 holy. Play those instruments, come on. Play those instruments, play those instruments. That's it. Oh, just get lost in the presence of the Lord. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. Keep singing, keep singing, keep singing, keep singing. I will bless the Lord, I will bless Him, I will bless Him. Sing, sing, every voice, every voice. Holy, 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 holy is the Lord God Almighty. The earth is filled with His glory. The earth is filled with His glory. The earth is filled with His glory. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. But the earth is filled with His glory. The earth is filled with His glory. Wonderful Jesus, we glorify you.
there are no spectators tonight not in the presence of Jesus not in the presence of Jesus now we're with him what do you want to do you want to stay with him continue to love him continue to love him Holy, 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 holy. Worthy is his name and is greatly to be praised. Great is the Lord and greatly to be praised. <laughs> greatly to be praised. He's greatly to be praised, Jose. Greatly to be praised. my voice. Yeah. 
Bless him, 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 bless him. That's it. Praise you, Lord. Don't worry if your hands are cold. The Lord will heal you. Lift them to the Lord. Jesus, we bless you tonight.
sing that with Steph softly, everyone. Worship your Lord. Let's sing that again. Let's lift our hands to the Lord in one accord, one family. Heavenly Father, we come tonight in the name of your precious and holy Son, Jesus. The name above every name. And collectively, Lord, we all say thank you for giving Jesus to die in our place. Holy Spirit, I ask now in Jesus' name that your power and presence would move, that you would rip people out of hell tonight, that you would manifest your glory here in a way that we've never seen, that sick bodies would be healed to glorify Jesus, and that many would be filled with the Holy Spirit and burn with first love and burn with first love in Jesus name and the people said I want you to lift a shout and seal it seal it seal it Hallelujah. 
second. Keep playing, keep playing. You know, the Bible says that the princes are bound and that fetters, fetters break in praise. I'm telling you, something is happening right now. We praise because Jesus is worthy and as a reward, he begins to break chains. Praise is a weapon. Praise is a weapon. Oh, come on, build God a house with your praise tonight. Build God a house with your praise. I feel something, something stirring in my soul. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. Worthy, worthy, worthy. Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Keep playing. Tonight we celebrate this song. We celebrate this song. Lift up your heads, O oh you gates. And be lifted up, ye everlasting doors. We celebrate the, the night Jesus died on the cross and descended into the underworld. And the King of glory shall come in. Oh my God. Who is this King of glory? The Lord strong and mighty. The Lord mighty in battle. Lift up your head. Oh, ye gates, ye everlasting doors, and the King of glory shall come in. Who is this King of glory? The Lord of hosts, he is the King of glory. Jesus, you have conquered death. The grave has been plundered. You are the King of glory. The Lord strong and mighty. The Lord of hosts. I don't know what you walked in with tonight that did not come from the Lord. But everything that did not come from Him is going to bow its knee tonight. As the Bible says, God is enthroned in the praises or on the praises of His people. That means the kingdom moves forward when we praise. And the dominating king, the kingdom, the king and his kingdom rule and reign in an atmosphere of praise. And the devil doesn't have a chance tonight. Not a chance tonight. Not a chance tonight. Hit those drums. That's a battle cry. That's a battle cry. Hit those drums. Hit those drums. 
And bring that cross. I want the cross closer. Bring the cross. Ryan, Ryan, give me that cross. Not you. Get that cross over here. There we go. All right, lift your hands to heaven. Father in heaven, have your way now and move in power and glory. Tonight, by faith, I thank you in advance for souls coming into the kingdom. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Say amen. amen. Tell somebody Jesus loves them and grab a seat. And thank our worship team when you're done. Would you please let them know you love them? What on earth was that? Welcome to sunny Florida. <laughs> Welcome for the next 15 minutes. I'm going to ask that nobody moves around, so quickly find your seats. Hallelujah. Amen. Quickly find your seats, nobody moving. I did hear some kids, which is great, I'm glad they're here, but while I'm preaching, if they get loud, I'm just asking that you just move them a bit away because I'm about to preach the gospel. The gospel is heaven's song. This is not a game and I feel the fury of the Lord about to rescue souls forever. Say amen. My word. If you can't preach after that, you need to Become a golfer. <laughs> what a holy night tonight is. And um, I know it is a bit chilly, but it, I think it's better than the mosquitoes. <laughs> and we'll be asking for this in August, won't we? Hallelujah. Tonight we're going to celebrate the glorious death of the Lord Jesus Christ. And I wanted that cross right here behind me because I wanted all of us to see the cross tonight. Tonight is a holy night as we celebrate the greatest revelation of the nature of God, Christ and Him crucified. No other moment, listen carefully, no other moment in the Lord's life while He was here on earth do we find a greater revelation than the character of God than we do in the crucifixion of the Lord Jesus. There is absolutely no God like Jesus Christ. No other God comes to die for his creation. The Bible says we were enemies of God, yet he died for us. You should close your eyes right now and just say, thank you, Jesus. Holy Spirit, move, I pray now, on the hearts of men and women. Tonight we celebrate and worship the only wise God who conquered his enemies through humility, lowliness, and ultimately death. The scripture says in 1 Corinthians 2 verse 8, for had they known, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. What does that mean? So great is the wisdom of God in the crucifixion that had the rulers of the age known, they never ever would have done it. They thought they were winning, 
Yet Jesus was destroying the grave, death, and hell through the portal of lowliness, through the holy doorway of the grave. Someone once said, the grave thought it swallowed a mere man, not knowing it swallowed the God-man. The grave swallowed a holy nuclear bomb that would destroy it forever. And today, in our country, in our city, here in our state, we're addicted to debating and arguing and commenting. I want to say clearly tonight and boldly that there is no wisdom like Jesus and Him crucified. He is still the only answer for mankind and for you. The early church used to sing, listen to this, when creation saw thee, who by thy own will hung the whole of creation, the earth upon the waters, you hung on Golgotha, and creation was seized with great wonder and cried aloud. Ryan, can you grab this, buddy? I'm too fired up to drink water. We worship the one tonight who proved himself a stranger to corruption. And Psalm 16.10 says, For you will not leave my soul in Sheol, nor will you allow your Holy One to see corruption. Tonight we bow before the only one who destroyed the power of hell eternally. Colossians 2, 14 and 15. Listen carefully. Having wiped out the handwriting of requirements that was against us. In other words, the law of God that we broke consistently without trying by our nature. We were... We had requirement against us, written against us because of our sin, but he wiped out the handwriting of the requirement, which was contrary to us, the scripture says, and he, was, and he has taken it out of the way, having nailed, to, nailed it to the cross. Say the cross. Having disarmed principalities and powers, he made a public spectacle of them, triumphing, triumphing over them in the cross. Such a humble symbol. I don't mean to be critical in the least, but sometimes I watch Christian events and the backdrops are super creative. And incredibly flashy and That might not be too flashy, but the devil is petrified of the cross. So I didn't come here tonight to tickle your back. I came here to rip the claws of Satan off of you by the preaching of the gospel. Hebrews 2, 14 and 15, listen carefully. Inasmuch then as the children have partaken of flesh and blood, in other words, we are flesh and blood, he himself likewise shared in the same, that through death he might destroy him who had the power of death, that is the devil, and release those who through fear of death were all their lifetime subject to bondage. Let me paraphrase. Jesus took on flesh and blood, the second person of the Godhead, the Word, the eternal Son, took on flesh and blood because we are flesh and blood. And by taking our death, he conquered the devil with his own perfection. Listen carefully. So that you would not have to fear death. Jesus went all the way to the end of the road by being buried by dying and destroy death so that the church would laugh in the face of it. See, you're not afraid tonight of uh, driving. You're afraid to die. 
You're not afraid of small places. You're afraid to die in small places. You're not afraid of a virus. or sick. You're, People are afraid to die. Death is the ultimate, listen, the ultimate enemy in this context. And the scripture says here that Jesus destroyed death. He conquered death by dying and taking our death and your death. One day we will all breathe our last. Each and every one of us will hopefully be surrounded by family, hopefully live a long life. We don't know though, tomorrow's not promised. But the one thing, the one truth we can hold on to in that moment is this. Jesus shed his blood and died for me. He took my grave and he's been raised from the dead. Therefore, he is my life. And I can close my eyes and to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. Jesus is our only hope. Tonight we worship the one who is our true Sabbath. Christ Jesus rested from his own works when his body lay in the grave. Good Friday is about celebrating the one who gave his life, and this Jesus, who lived a perfect life for 33 and a half years, would ultimately come to the place where he would stretch out his arms and yield his life and take true Sabbath rest and lay in a tomb and trust his Father to quicken his body three days later. Say this, Jesus is my Sabbath. That's why he said, come unto me, all you who are weary and heavy laden, if you're carrying a burden that wasn't yours to carry, if you feel like you're carrying the weight of the world, you don't have to. If you're tired, you shouldn't be. You can't clean you, and you can't save you, and you can't redeem you, and you cannot wash your own sin away. Our blood is tainted. We need the blood of another. We need perfect blood to wash away our imperfection. And so Jesus said, if you'll come to me, I will give you rest. Why does he give rest? Because he is our Sabbath rest, manifested as he lay in the tomb. Listen carefully now. Oh, this is too good. In Genesis 2, verse 15, the scripture says, the Lord God took the man and put him in the garden of Eden to tend and keep it. And the Lord God commanded the man, saying of every tree, say the tree, of every tree of the garden you may freely eat, but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil you shall not eat, for in the day that you eat of it you shall surely die. Again, say a tree. In Deuteronomy 21, verse 22 and 23, if a man has committed a sin deserving of death and he is put to death and you hang him on a tree... His body shall not remain overnight on the tree, but you shall surely bury him that day so that you do not defile the land which the Lord your God is giving you as an inheritance. For he, listen carefully, for he who hangs on a tree is cursed. Any man who hangeth on a tree is cursed, the scripture says. And Galatians 3, 13 and 14 says, Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law having become a curse for us. Cursed is everyone who hangs on the tree. In Exodus chapter 15, again, we see the tree as a type and shadow as God begins to speak to us about Calvary's tree. In Exodus 15, 22 and 26, Moses brought Israel from the Red Sea and then they went out into the wilderness of Shur. They went three days in the wilderness and found no water. Now when they came to Mara, they, came, they could not drink the waters of Mara, for they were bitter. Therefore, the name of it was called Mara. And the people complained against Moses, saying, What shall we drink? 
So he cried out to the Lord, and the Lord showed him a tree. And when he cast it into the waters, the waters were made sweet. Say a tree. Everyone, say a tree. Moses delivers Israel as a type and picture of Jesus Christ. He leads them out. Israel goes through the Red Sea. God parts it, speaking of baptism. The Bible teaches that they were baptized in the sea and they were baptized into the holy cloud of God's presence, the Holy Spirit, and baptized into Moses, Paul said. Once they cross the Red Sea, this is so powerful. Once they cross the Red Sea, they come to the other side only to find bitter waters. Waters in the scripture speak of the Word of God, the Holy Spirit, and the spirit of men and women. That's why David cried, deep calleth unto deep. My spirit to your spirit. Those waters were bitter and God gave Moses the remedy for the bitter waters. He said, do you see the tree in the distance? And Moses took the tree, the Bible says, and cast it into the, into the water, into the bitter waters. Notice Moses, everybody look me in the eyes. And please help me with those children who are making the noise, please. Just, just very kindly, if we could just, maybe just move them off a bit. Notice Moses did not place the tree in the waters. He didn't gently lay the tree down. The Bible says he cast the tree into the waters. Friends, the cross comes with speed. The cross comes with violence. The cross comes with tenacity. God casts the tree into the depths of our hearts that are bitter. Have you ever taken a heavy piece of wood and cast it into a pool? For a moment it goes down and then it shoots up to the top and floats. And this is what the Lord does in us. When the tree does its work, it plunges into the depths of our hearts until only the tree remains, until only Jesus is seen in our lives. Friend, if you want to look like Jesus, give the tree access to your heart tonight. Let the Lord cast the power of the cross into your heart. Moses prior to that, comes to a burning bush. And the Bible says that God was in the bush, in the flame of fire, and that God spoke to Moses and called to him from the burning bush. In Acts chapter 7, fast forward, Stephen is addressing Israel, and the Amplified and New American Standard do not just call it a bush. Listen up, this is amazing. The Amplified and New American Standard call it a thorn bush. God wearing thorns, calling out to Moses as a prophecy that one day the same God would put on a body and the angel would call his name Jesus. And he would wear a crown of thorns to take our curse as the thorns speak of the curse. Throughout Moses' journey, what did he hold up the entire time in Egypt? Say a staff, a tree, a piece of wood. And every time Moses lifted that staff, he was declaring to the foul gods of Egypt, you will bow your knee. He was basically saying, Jesus is king, and you are not, every time he lifted the staff. In Exodus chapter 12, the Israelites were commanded to roast the lamb over an open fire. Not boil it, not fry it, not cook it quickly but to roast it. And to roast that lamb, you would have to run it through with a pole, a wooden pole. 
And to roast something is to slow cook something. And Jesus did not die a quick death. He died a slow death. And when you roast a lamb, that lamb turns darker and darker and darker and darker. A prophetic picture that Jesus would become our sin, suspended between the fires of the roasting or the fires of hell and heaven and become our bridge and the way, the truth, and the life. This is the wisdom. And it's uh, an amazing wisdom. And that's why Paul said, I did not come to you with excellence of speech. I determined to know nothing among you except Jesus and him crucified. Friends, you might know church. You might know the ministry. You might think you know your parents God. But churches do not save. Events do not save. Conferences do not save. Only Jesus saves. You can't come to Jesus through your parents. You can't come to Jesus through your pastor. You have to meet Jesus tonight on your own. There's an old saying, and how true it is, God has no grandchildren. Paul said, I have nothing else to tell you but Jesus and him crucified for that reason. So this thing all started in a garden. Oh, God is amazing. You know the devil is not wise. He is smart, but he's not wise. God is wisdom. Say amen. This whole thing started in a garden and Adam and Eve eat from a living tree. And that tree was not called the tree of adultery or the tree of pornography or the tree of addiction. It was just called the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. In other words, the tree of knowing stuff other than Jesus. The tree of knowing theory. The tree of trying to fix society another way. The tree of philosophy. The tree of self-help. The tree of leadership seminars. As great as they are, they don't save the soul. And notice it wasn't called just the tree of evil. It was called the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. In other words, any knowledge outside of Jesus ultimately brings death. So they eat from this tree and death sets in. Jesus comes along. 4,000 years later, and the first Adam eats from a living tree that looked beautiful and death comes. 4,000 years later, Jesus comes, hangs as the first fruits on a dead tree, and life comes. This is why the wisdom is too much. And this is why, had they known, they would have never crucified the Lord of glory. You better say thank you, Jesus. Adam falls in a garden. Jesus wins in a garden. In the Gospel of John, oh man, you were about to slap your neighbor. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. Don't slap them and blame us. Listen to this. Listen, 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 listen. But Mary stood outside the tomb, John 20, 11, weeping. And as she wept, she stooped down and looked into the tomb, and she saw two angels in white sitting, one at the head and the other at the feet. That sounds a bit like the Ark of the Covenant. If you want that teaching, you'll have to come on a Sunday. <laughs> Where the body of Jesus lay, and the angel said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? She said to them, Because they have taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they have laid him. Now when she had said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there and did not know that it was Jesus. And Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? 
Whom are you seeking? And she, listen carefully, she's supposing him to be the gardener. Said to him, Sir, if you've taken him away, tell me where you've laid him. Oh, I feel the Holy Spirit right now. Tell me where you've laid him and I will take him away. Love doesn't think pragmatically. What was Mary to do? Could she really carry Jesus? No, but love doesn't think like that. She said, just give him to me. I'll find a way to get him to where he needs to go. That's what love sounds like. Why did she see him as a gardener? Because eternity was lost in a garden. Was the Holy Spirit saying, I have come to restore the Eden of your heart. The work is over. The price has been paid. It is truly finished. No longer do you need to work by the sweat of your brow. But you now contend and keep Eden. And by the way, Eden means pleasure. That's why Jesus said, my peace I give you, that your joy might be full, Jesus said. Wisdom, say a tree. This Jesus lived a perfect life, born of a virgin, manifested the Father perfectly. He is the Father's only sermon. The Father has one sermon. It is, this is my son. He fed the hungry. He walked on water to prove he created it. He multiplied food to tell, to tell us he is our provider. He restored the prostitute so that we'd see him as the loving Savior. Because the Son of Man did not come in to judge or condemn the world. He came. He came to save the world. If you're wondering whether or not Jesus heals, he emptied entire villages of the sick. You wonder tonight, what is God like? In many ways, the mystery has been revealed. Just look at Jesus. He would ultimately give his back. He was tied to a whipping post, and they did not need to tie Jesus to the whipping post. He would have held on just for you. He was stripped naked because Adam lost the glory in the garden. And Jesus was stripped naked so he would take your shame so that you would one day receive his glory again at your salvation. Isn't he wonderful? I said, isn't he wonderful? They put a crown of thorns on him. He traded heaven's diadem for a crown of thorns. Thorns speak of the curse so that your mind would be renewed. Isaiah writes, he was disfigured, marred more than any man, so that your, your image would be restored in God's image. He would ultimately carry a cross on a skinned back, striped by the cat of nine tails, he would carry that cross up a mountain. He did not die in private. And that's why tonight you will have the opportunity to give your life to Jesus in public because he died in public. And he was nailed to a tree at the city's busiest intersection for all the city to see. As the Passover lambs were dying throughout the holy city, here, our Passover lamb, dying on the tree. Now the scripture says this, Cursed be any man who hangs on a tree. But Jesus took your curse upon the cursed tree. Therefore, cursing your curse and canceling it forever. Eventually, he would breathe his last. His father would turn his face away. And the sky would grow dark. Man would not mourn him. So the sun and stars did. And the earth did, and the earth quaked, and the rocks broke open and exploded because the one who held them together breathed his last. Remember Jesus said, if you don't praise me, the rocks will cry out? They did. 
And when he said it was finished, he had you in mind. Isaiah writes, he saw you afar off. God sent me here tonight for those of you who are not truly walking with Jesus and you know whether or not you are. It's measurable. It's quite simple. Are you free from sin? If you're not, you can be tonight. And that Jesus was buried for three days and he went into the tomb and the Bible says he went into hell and totally destroyed it so you would not have to spend eternity there. And three days later came climbing out of death, took captivity captive, and the graves broke open as a sign that he truly is resurrection and life. And the Lion of Judah came roaring out of the underworld as the conquering king. And this same Jesus, 40 days later, ascended to the right hand of the Father. And tonight is still seated there, interceding for all who belong to him. And you can belong to him tonight. I said you can belong to him tonight. And one day, and with every second we draw more near and more near and more near, one day the eastern sky will crack open. Like a whip it will tear open. And the Jesus who entered the holy city of Jerusalem on a donkey will not break the atmosphere on a donkey. He will break the eastern sky with a white horse and come and rule and reign as King of kings and Lord of lords. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. On that day, you will face him as one of two types of people. Listen to me. Everyone, listen to me. You will face him as one of two types of people. An enemy or his bride. You get to choose tonight with every head bowed and eye closed. If you are not sure, you're not 100% sure that your eternity is secure, that if you were to die tonight, that you would spend eternity with the Lord Jesus? If you're not sure, if there is sin in your life that has completely dominated you, Jesus said, he who sins is a slave to sin. He also said, whom the sun sets free is free indeed. You can be free tonight. You can leave completely brand new. What does he ask of you? To repent of your sin and put all of your trust in Jesus and him crucified and he will come and not only wipe your sin away, but come and live in your heart forever and your body will become the temple of the Holy Spirit. You say, Michael, I want to give my life to Jesus fully. You may be backslidden tonight. You're not walking with the Lord. The Lord didn't bring you to here, here to come to some cool event. He brought you here to save your soul to restore your life. You say, Michael, that's me. I want you to lift your hand all over this place. You say, Michael, that's me. I want to give my life to Jesus tonight. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. If you're in the back there, I want you to lift your hand. I want everyone to stand up, please. Everyone, everyone stand. Everyone, everyone stand, please. Hallelujah. Listen carefully. If you're not burning with a love for Jesus, if you're not truly following Jesus, Tonight is your night. Nothing else matters. The hour is too late to let anything get in the way. If you raise your hand tonight or you wish you did, I want you to very slowly come down here and spread out. Very slowly come down here and spread out. Many of you raise your hand. Come down, make a public, and I want you to give the Lord praise as they start coming. I want you to make a public, a public proclamation that you are giving all to Jesus. Come, come, come down. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Come. Come give your life to Jesus. Oh, come on. Give the Lord praise. Come. Come. They're coming from all over. All over. Spread out. Spread out. Come on, church. Give the Lord praise. Spread out. Spread out. Spread out. Pick up those strings. I want to hear them. I want to hear them. 
Come, come, come on. Come on. Don't waste any more time. Come to Jesus tonight. Spread them out. And once we get too full here, I want them to line up on the stairs. Line up on the stairs going up. Children, children, listen to me. Children, if you can hear me, I want you to look at your parents right now. If you want to give your life to Jesus, you say, Mommy and Daddy, I want to get down there. I want to give my life to Jesus. You bring your parents with you. Come on, they're still coming. Come on, give the Lord praise. This is awesome. This is awesome. You better do better than that. Thank you, Lord. Look, they're coming down weeping. I want her right up front. I want her. I want you right up front. They're still coming. Look at the little kids giving their lives to Jesus. Look at this. Come on, sweetie. Come on. Teenagers, nothing else matters but Jesus. Come give your life to the Lord. Look, they're coming down weeping. Parents are coming down weeping with their children. This is wonderful. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Friends, listen, everyone. If you brought someone tonight, you know them. It's pretty easy to know if they're on fire for Jesus or not. If they're not, I want you to look them in the eye and say, come on, you need to get down there. You do it. Come on, you do it. You do the work of the evangelist. It's time for the church to emerge. Say, come on, I'll go down with you. I'll go down with you. Come on. No more games. No more games. Come on. Come give your life to Jesus. This is awesome. That's it. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, the devil's losing big. I love this. I love this. Hallelujah. 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 Look, look, the young people are still coming. I'm not moving. I'm not, I'm not moving. Church, do you realize what's going on in heaven right now? All of heaven is rejoicing. We have room here. Let's make room for them, guys. We have room on this side. If, if, come on, come on. I want to make room for them. Look, they're still coming. They're still coming. Come on. Come on, you can wear all this gear, but your life tells you whether or not you know Jesus. Come give your life to the Lord. Hallelujah. Coming way back on the field, they're coming forward. Hallelujah. I'm waiting for you because Jesus has been waiting a long time for you. A long time. This is why we did this. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Yeah. Yeah. Still coming. Look at the little kids. Little kids wanting to give their lives to Jesus. There's no way these people are from up north. They're dressed like Eskimos. Come on. You got to be from Miami. Come on. There's still more coming, more coming, more coming, more coming. Yes! Yes! Hey, Jose. Jose, get on the drums. Come on. Come on. I need something victorious behind me. You guys are all bundled up like you're in Antarctica. I'm burning up here. Come on. Thank you, Lord. Still coming. You still are still coming. I'm going to begin praying with you. And if I'm praying and you want to come down, you will not interrupt us. There's room at the cross. 
There is room at the cross. Everyone who came forward, please look me in the eye. What this is not is a religious exercise. That is not what we're doing right now. Tonight, a literal exchange will take, take place, a transaction. God will not change your life tonight. He's going to completely replace your life tonight, and that's way better. Jesus is not the improver. He is the creator. And tonight you will be born again, born from above, completely reborn. Every sin you ever committed will be washed away. It will be removed from you. It will be so removed, it will be as far as the east is from the west. It will be cast into a sea called forgetfulness. And the Lord will never remind you of your sin again. Additionally, the Holy Spirit is going to make you His home. He's going to come and live inside of you and you'll never be alone. Never ever again. Are you ready? You say, what must I do? You're going to turn from everything tonight. Turn from your sin. Renounce your sin. Renounce Satan and put your trust in Jesus Christ. Are you ready to do that? Is everyone here ready to leave all and follow Jesus even if it costs your life? You ready for that? Yes or no? Because that's the cost. Okay. Let's pray. I want everyone out there to stretch your hands towards these precious souls. And I want everyone who's come forward to just lift your hands as, as an act of surrender. We're all going to pray out loud and I want, listen, I want the heavens to feel this and I want hell to shake. Are you ready? Heavenly Father. We come to you tonight, having sinned against you. Forgive my sin. Wash me in the blood of Jesus. Cleanse my soul. Jesus, I repent. I turn from my sin. And I turn to you and you alone. I renounce the devil. I renounce the world and its ways. I renounce my own plan for my life. And I give my life to you. I believe that you are the Son of the living God. That you died on the cross and shed your blood to wash away my sin. I believe that you were buried and raised from the dead. And I believe that you ascended to the right hand of the Father and that you are coming back again. You are the Lord of Lords. You are God Almighty. I confess you tonight as the Lord of my life and I hand my life over to you. Come into my heart, Lord Jesus. Receive me as I receive you. I am born again. I am a child of the living God. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Give the Lord praise. Hey, Bruce. Now, everyone look at me very quickly. Listen, listen, listen. Very quickly. Every day you need to read your Bible. How often should you read your Bible? I want to hear the whole crowd. How often should you read your Bible? Every day you need to pray. Okay? You can pray every day. Every, listen, every day just talk to God and let Him talk to you. Number three. Get baptized in water. So number one, read your Bible. Number two, pray. Number three, be baptized in water. We want to help you do that. And um, how are we going to do that here? I guess we can text more Jesus. If we could put that info up, please. When, yeah, that's the number you're going to text when you leave here. So we'll leave that up for you. You're going to text that number and we'll help equip you and get you a Bible, etc. Lastly, lastly, 
Well, not lastly. There's two more. Next, you need to join a people and live in the presence of God with a people. That's called church. We would love to have you join this church. If God leads you another direction, just make sure you find a church that loves the whole Bible, the whole Bible, and loves the presence of God. Amen? And lastly, Jesus said, listen, Jesus said you would receive power. All of you look at me. Say power. After that, the Holy Spirit has come upon you. That's what he said. And this is why you need that power. Because all of you have family members and friends who need Jesus. You don't have to do it on your own. He doesn't want you to. He said you do it by the power of the Holy Spirit. And that's why I've asked Pastor Paul. Pastor Paul is a charismatic Lutheran pastor anointed by the Holy Spirit with a great signs and wonders Holy Spirit healing ministry. And I'm going to ask him right now to pray. Reb, would you pray over these new precious believers that they would receive the power of the Amen. Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you, Lord. First, let's give the Lord a mighty hand for what he's done here tonight. And I, I've known Michael for a long time, and there's such an anointing on him. I mean, when he preaches, you know, hell shakes, hearts are open. Hearts are open. Weren't your hearts burning tonight when you heard the gospel? Like those men on the road to Emmaus, their hearts burned. Now, let me ask you, aside from all of you up here that just gave your life to the Lord, how many of you believe in Jesus Christ? Raise your hand. All right. All right. If you didn't raise your hand, there's still time for you to come up here tonight and get filled with the Holy Spirit. Now, look, the Bible says that no one confesses Christ as Lord without the Holy Spirit. That means that if you believe in Jesus, you have what? The Holy Spirit, that you're a temple of the Holy Spirit. And as Michael said in, in his sermon, the Holy Spirit is the power, the Bible says, that raised Jesus from the dead. Let me say that again. The power that raised Jesus from the dead was what? The Holy Spirit. And you're a temple of the Holy Spirit. That means Amen. that right now, you have in you the power of God to raise the dead. I mean, you're looking at me saying, are you talking to me? Yeah, I'm talking to you. <laughs> it's not, no man can heal a man. That's right. God heals through the blood and stripes of Jesus Christ through the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. All right? Now, I want to say something to you that's very important. If you read the last chapter in Mark, it said that the believers went out and kicked out demons. The believers anointed the sick right. and people were healed. The believers That's right. were the ones doing the work. It doesn't say the deacons, the pastors, the bishops, the believers. Right. If you're a believer in Jesus, you have the Holy Spirit. You already have the power of God. Now Amen. look, look, there's nothing that separates any of us from one another if you have the Holy Spirit. There's a young man here, a 24-year-old, 12 years ago, my grandson, I got called from a guy in Dallas, and, and he said, could you come meet my friend, his 17-year-old his daughter? Both their lungs are full of tumors. This was a Tuesday afternoon. One lung, lung lobe had collapsed. They were going to take her in on, the next, on Thursday, two days later, to have a protocol work up to see how to handle the cancer that had invaded her 17-year-old body. So I said, I'll come meet with the dad, but I have to pick up my 12-year-old grandson at elementary school, or, or junior high, I'm sorry. And so we meet the man, we, we talk, we go over to meet the daughter, the daughter's ready to be prayed for, she's a believer, and guess what, I said, okay, I'm gonna have my 12-year-old grandson anoint you with oil and pray over you. I didn't pray for her, I didn't anoint her for oil. This 24-year-old right here now, 12-year-old then, laid hands on this 17-year-old, prayed for her. Thursday, she goes into the Presbyterian Hospital in Dallas. No tumors in her lungs. Come on. Thank you, Lord. Her lungs were perfectly healed. No Thank collapsed you, lung. The doctor held the x-ray up for the dad and said, this is what we were looking at. This is what we're looking at now. And wow. he said, this can only be explained in this way. It was a miracle. 
Paul Teske didn't pray. This 12-year-old prayed. You see, God can work through any of us if you're willing to be used by God. To preach and teach, proclaim the gospel. To lay hands on the sick. Look, as a believer, you have the Holy Spirit. And the responsibility is on your life to allow God God to flow through you. So what I want to do right now is pray for God to release an anointing in your life to give you the boldness to do what on, God you wants you to this. do, Everybody to go where he sends faith. you. Come on, come on, grab To this allow him to work through you. It's not you, it's God working through you. The real question is, are you willing to let God use you? Are you willing to let God use you? Because he will use you in such a mighty way. So Father God, I pray now for every believer in this, uh, this gathering that the Holy Spirit in them would now begin to flow up like that river of living water released in John. Lord, we don't have to wait for Pentecost. The Holy Spirit is already here. It's in us, and it's about to be released. So, Father God, I pray that you would release the power that you've placed in each believer. Give them the faith, the sense of obedience the, the strong expectancy that you're going to work through them to do a mighty work. Tonight, Michael preached, and Lord, you moved. Now, Lord, I pray that you continue to move through every believer now. Yes, Lord. As you release the yes, anointing, Lord. the Holy Spirit, yes, the fire through their lives. And all God's people said. Amen. Amen. Thank you, brother. Love you. Thank you. Come on, give the Lord praise. Give the Lord praise. Give the Lord praise. I want all of us to welcome these new children of the Lord home. You can go back to your seats. Go back to your seats. I want you all to text more Jesus to 321-320-8040 when you get back to your seats. Come on, give the Lord praise one more time. Oh, give the Lord praise just one more time. It's amazing. You can be seated. You can be seated. This is a perfect time to give to the Lord. Say amen. amen. Carla, are you here? Carla, what did this event cost? This event, to do this tonight, cost $85,000. 85000 for the production, the cameras, the rental, everything involved. How many of you believe these souls are worth every penny? Come on. No gimmickry, nothing. I just want to let you know the truth. We are church family, and I wanted you to know what this actually costs. And I'm believing in faith tonight that the entire bill will be covered and then some. Say amen. Say amen. So for those of you watching tonight around the world, thousands are watching all over the world tonight. Can we welcome our online family, by the way? We love you. Thank you for tuning in. If this ministry, if this service is blessing you, and by the way, if you got saved tonight, if you gave your life to Jesus and you're watching, we want you to text more Jesus to that number on your screen as well, and we want to walk with you. I'm going to ask everybody here to do something tonight. Those of you back on the field, those of you here in the seats, those of you lined up on the sides, I want everybody here to do something. So if you'd like to give by text to give, uh, choir, you guys can come up. If you'd like to give by text to give, you'll text GIVE to 321-320-8040. There is no better place to put our resources than in the gospel. I said, I'm going to say that again. I think we went from a mountaintop right now and all of you turned into silent monks. <laughs> this is part of the Christian life. It is in the Word of God. Nothing is our own. We gladly give to Jesus for the sake of His gospel. Amen? <laughs> say amen. So, you can text GIVE to 321-320-8040. Does anybody want an envelope? You do not trust technology. <laughs> All right, we've got a few of you OGs left. I love you. Thank you for being that way. If anybody needs an envelope, you can raise your hand, ushers, and get to them. You will write your check out to Jesus' image, and if you give cash, please write legibly on the envelope. Guys, could we move this pulpit Please welcome the choir as you give. Come on.
everybody have their elements? Does everybody have their communion elements? If you do not, would you please raise your hand? Okay. Please welcome Pastor Benny Hinn to the platform. He is going to lead us in communion tonight. He came out on this beautiful, warm night. Oh, he wants the choir to go first. Well, we'll welcome him in a minute. Getting him out in this cold was a miracle. But this is a very holy time. So if you'd like, if those of you are sitting on the hill in the back, if you'd like to come grab some of these seats, come grab them. Some people froze and had to get home. So there, we, have, we have seats here that you're welcome to come fill. Ushers, if you would help me with that, please. You're going to want to get close for communion. And plus, it's warmer. You get more body heat. Thank you, Jesus. If you still need communion elements, please keep your hands up so our ushers can get to you. And would all of you please thank our volunteers and the entire team who made this possible. Yeah, we've got more room, so ushers, keep filling these seats off the, grass, off the grassy hill. All right. The choir, you take your seats as well. Come sit down. You guys grab, a, grab some seats here. Choir. All right. Okay, I, th I, I need some elements, please. I'll need one up here, guys. Thank you. And I need one more. One more, please. Thank you. Yeah, choir, let's fill in these seats. Thank you, Lord. Okay. The people on the hill have their chairs. They're like, we don't want those hard seats. They're nice and warm. <laughs> Got their campers back there, their stoves. <laughs> choir, let's fill in here on the side, guys. Those choir members who are standing there, let's grab your seats, please. Okay, let's all stand and pray. Before we receive communion tonight, I want all of you to bring, listen carefully, listen carefully. I want you to bring your faith and your need to the table of the Lord tonight. And we trust the Lord Jesus and the power of his body and blood to move through our lives. Father, in Jesus' name, thank you for the presence of the Holy Spirit. Do wonderful things tonight. Thank you for the meal of the covenant in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's welcome Pastor Benny. I'm do it in 10 minutes. Yeah, do it. I know. Do it. Take your seats, please. It's so cold here. My daughter said, you have 25 minutes. I said, I'll do it in 10. Because I'm cold. I just finished doing uh, a service for... Love World and our ministry, and so I had to wear, it's so cold, I'm wearing my suit and this over it. I know it looks silly, but I don't care. I want to just talk to you for a few minutes about the importance of the blood. And I want you to think about this for a minute. First, can you just lift your hands and thank the Lord? Wonderful Jesus, wonderful Savior. Oh, you are so wonderful. To you be the glory, the honor, the praise. Thank you, Lord, for what you've done for us. Hallelujah. I want to just thank you, gentlemen. Thank you. I just want to just talk to you a little bit. And just let you think that God became a baby. Just think about that one a minute. 
that the God of glory, you know, people don't understand something about this. God doesn't live his life. And God doesn't exist. He is existence. He is the I am. So God does not live in the universe. It lives in him. And he is eternity itself. So he doesn't live in eternity. He is eternity. Because Jesus said, and this is life eternal that they might know thee and Jesus whom thou hast sent. Now this God became a baby. Now think about this for a minute. When God created Adam, he was fully grown with full of wisdom and knowledge. I cannot identify with that at all. I just cannot identify with a man who was not born. He was created fully grown with an amazing mind. So who's the real man? Is it Adam or Jesus? It's Jesus, here's why. Because to be a real man, you must have parents. And Adam didn't have any. To be a real man, you must have lineage. Jesus came from the tribe of Judah. Adam came from nowhere. Mud. <laughs> came from mud. So, and there's a few more things, but because I'm cold, I won't tell you. Maybe next time. <laughs> <laughs> I'm cutting it short, real, real good. <laughs> but, but this amazing God becomes flesh dependent on mommy, daddy. Even though Joseph was not his father, Joseph, though, made sure the family had food and shelter. And now this amazing, wonderful God is fully grown and they called him the Lamb of God. Behold the Lamb of God, said John the Baptist. This wonderful Jesus, 2,000 years ago, shed his blood. Why? Let me answer that question real quick. First of all, if I only had the New Testament, I would not believe it. Why? Because it doesn't have a foundation. Without the Old Testament, the New Testament means nothing. Think about that. If the apostles came and wrote the New Testament, without the Old Testament, there's no foundation to it. There's nowhere to go, except you believe Galileans who were there. And saw and heard the Son of God. But God was so amazing that for thousands and thousands of years before Jesus ever came, he gave us details about his coming. To confirm he is Messiah. So think about the Bible. If we did not have the old covenant, the new would mean nothing. Hundreds of prophecies, even his childhood, unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, the Mighty God. Called him God as a baby. Isaiah predicted his death in details. I gave my back to the smiters, Isaiah 50. I gave my back to those who smited my back and my face to those who plucked my beard off. Fulfilled in details when Jesus came. His visage was so marred more than any man. His form more than the sons of man. So shall he sprinkle the nations. Isaiah 52, 14. Jesus fulfilled it. Wow. And I mean, wow. And detail after detail, prophecy after prophecy. 
His birth, childhood, baptism, life, death, resurrection, ascension, second coming. More prophecies about his second, his second coming have not even been fulfilled yet. So how do we know that these will be fulfilled? Because everything that happened already has been fulfilled in his first coming. That guarantees it's going to be fulfilled. The blood, very important to God. And tonight we are celebrating the victory of the cross. Hallelujah. So Adam created, Adam falls, God comes in Genesis 3.21 and covers him with what? Skin. Why? To promise him redemption. So there in the beginning of the Bible, we have one amazing truth. No man can approach God without the blood. Later, Abel, knowing by faith that God cannot be approached without the blood, came and offered blood. Genesis 4.4. His brother offered some vegetables. He was rejected. By faith, Abel offered blood. And God, in Hebrews 11, it says, testified of him. Think about that God talking about Abel, that he accepted him because he understood the covenant. Blood. They understood these wonderful saints. You cannot have favor with God without the blood. You cannot approach him without the blood. No fellowship without the blood. Noah, God says, take the animals seven by seven. Not two by two at first. Two by two came later. Bring the animals in, all the clean animals by seven. And all the unclean by twos. We've been taught wrong in Sunday school. It wasn't the twos, it was the sevens. But then the two by two were the unclean. Why the seven? Because when he came out of the ark, he understood one thing. He cannot break the curse without the blood. The earth was cursed. What does he do? He builds an altar in Genesis 8. He baptizes the earth with blood, and God smelled the beautiful aroma of the animals. And God said in his own heart, I'll not destroy it again. And the curse was broken. Why? The blood. Abraham enters the promised land in Genesis 12. The first thing that he does when God says, I give you the land, he offers blood on an altar. Why? He could not have had the land without it. He goes to Bethel. In fact, between Bethel and Ai, where he builds his tent by Shechem, in, in the present Nablus, it's called, in the West Bank. What does he do? Builds an altar. Why? Because he cannot have protection in the land without the blood. They understood. The patriarchs understood you can't have favor, blessings, protection, fellowship without the blood. Impossible. Impossible. <laughs> now, listen, I'm not done yet. I'm getting better. I'm getting warm. <laughs> but I'll, I'll keep at my time because I'm watching you. My daughter, woo! Thank God she's not my wife, woo! Glad she's my daughter. Thank you, Jesus. Isaac comes into the promised land. What does he, what does he do Later, when his father is in heaven, in Genesis 26, when God gives him the same promise that he gave his daddy, he builds an altar and offers blood. Because without the blood, the promise will not come. How about Jacob? Genesis 33. Comes, comes back from the house of Laban with Leah, Rachel, and the boys, and the girls. He did have daughters, even though the Bible doesn't mention a whole lot about them. What does he do? Builds an altar. 
Why? Because the promises would not be his without the blood. Now, their descendants, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, their descendants are in Egypt. 430 years. No mention of the blood or deliverance. Moses shows up. The whole land is destroyed. Still, there's no deliverance. Till God says, apply the blood. Whoa. 430 years they've been waiting for deliverance. But when the blood was applied, they were free before they could finish dinner. What a God we serve. God said, you apply that blood. And they made the son of the cross on every home. And then God made an amazing promise to us that was given to them. He said, I will not allow the destroyer to come into your homes. Thank God for the blood. Kenneth Hagin used to say, the devil can never cross the bloodline. And I used to say, the devil can look through your window. He'll never come through your door. If you apply the blood of Jesus. Thank God for the blood. But now here's, here's something so amazing. Israel comes out of Egypt. Down there at Sinai. Moses goes up. God gives him the law. He comes down. Genesis. I should say Exodus. 24. And God says, now listen. You come up. Bring with you Aaron. Abihu, Nadab. And 70 elders. They have dinner with God. Maybe even lunch. It doesn't tell us when it happened. <clears throat> but now God says this to Moses. He said, go down and apply the blood on the whole country. What an amazing thing. Moses sends these young men that killed probably thousands of hundreds of thousands of animals as a sacrifice. He takes that blood. He puts half, half of it in these massive big jars called basins. He sprinkles the blood on the book after he had applied it on the altar, the book of the law. And then three million people are sprayed with blood. Why? I'll tell you why. I just woke somebody up, thank the Lord. <laughs> why? <laughs> you on the front row, I got to pray for your ears right now, right? Because you see, Moses had been going up, coming down, going up, coming down, going up, coming down. After the blood was applied, God said, Moses, why don't you go and build me a tent? I'm coming down. The blood applied on the nation meant that God no longer required Moses to go up the mountain. God said, I'm coming down instead and will dwell among you. When you understand the power of the blood, it'll change your life. I saw it when I was 19 years old, Maxwell White's church in Canada. I just got saved and went to Maxwell's church. He wrote a powerful book called The Power of the Blood. You can still get it. He's in heaven now. And Maxwell was a short, stocky man from Britain. Big voice. And every Sunday night, he would say to the crowd, all of you with devils, meet me in the basement. <laughs> in the morning, I'd go to another church. Evening, always Maxwell White. And we kids would just watch. We wanted to go and watch him cast devils out. And he'd put all those people in a big circle. And he'd kid come in and just say, the blood of Jesus. He had a big voice. The blood, the blood, the blood. And they start manifesting. People. People who were actually singing, the joy of the Lord is my strength. They were growling down there, <laughs> throwing up, foaming at the mouth, rolling on the floor, chairs flying everywhere. And the man said, come out. And boy, they all did. That was my first experience to see there's power in the blood of Jesus. Why? Why? Because you see, Jesus shed his blood seven times for us, not one time. Did you know that? You see, in the Old Testament, on the, on the Day of Atonement, they would sprinkle the blood seven times before the Lord in the Holy of Holies, the high priest. 
And so now Jesus sheds his blood for us in Gethsemane. When his sweat became blood. Why? To heal our emotions. And then the blood was shed again in the house of Caiaphas. When they beat his face and tore his beard off. Why from his face? So one day we're going to look like him. Hallelujah. And then he went to the praetorium. Stood before Pilate. And they crowned him with crowns of thorns. And the blood was shed for the third time. Why? To heal our mind. Give us a brand new one, the mind of Christ. And then forth they whipped his back. And back then those cruel Roman soldiers had these whips with a lot of leather strips on them. And they would put these little metal balls with a little hole and they would bring them into these little strips and tie a knot here and knot there so they won't fall off. And every one one of them had nails in it that would roll like that. And hundreds of these metal balls, when they would whip, they would tear the flesh right off. And Jesus was whipped like that. That's why in the scriptures it says, I may tell all my bones. His body was broken with that whip. Why? Your healing. Your healing cost him a lot. His body was broken to heal you and put your body together. Thank you, Lord is right. That was number four shedding. Number five, his hands. Why? For my work to be accepted. Number six, his feet. Why? That I might walk with him. Number seven, his side. Why? To be born again. You see, when he hung on that cross and he began pulling his body up like that for six hours, it filled with water. And the water came out and the blood came out to save us. What a master, what a savior. But here's a miracle people don't think about. Hebrews 9.12 says, he walked into heaven with his blood. The question is, who gave it to him? Who collected the drops from the house of Caiaphas? Who collected the drops from, from the praetorium? Who took the blood from Via Dolorosa, the way of suffering? Jesus was bleeding heavily on the way to Golgotha. How about on Calvary? Who picked up those drops of blood to give it to him, to walk into heaven with it? And so the Bible says he walked with his own blood into glory. But who gave it to him? Who collected it? Only one person I know. The Holy Spirit. It had to be the Holy Spirit. So now, the Bible says in Hebrews 13.20... That Jesus rose from the dead because of the blood being accepted. God accepted when he was crucified. And now he took that blood accepted and offered it to the Lord. Why? That we can be parts now with him. Why? Do you, do you remember? Mary Magdalene comes and he said, don't touch me. I've not yet ascended to my father. Sunday night he comes and says, touch me. What happened in the afternoon? Something happened between morning and evening. Morning said, don't touch me. Evening he said, come touch me. Because the blood was accepted in glory. And now because of the blood, we can touch him. And he can touch us. Lift your hands and thank him for the blood. For it reaches to the highest mountain. And it flows to the lowest valley. It's the blood that gives us strength. From day to day, it will never, never, never lose its power. Lift your hands and thank you. Thank you, Lord, my sins and
chase in love you came and gave amazing grace thank you The treasure of heaven crucified Worthy is the Lamb Lift your hands to him one more time, come on Worthy is the Lamb Seated on on the throne treasure of heaven crucified worthy is the Lamb now just gently there on those instruments just a heavenly sound worthy is the Lamb now lift up the bread to him seated on the throne Crown you now with many crowns. You reign victorious. Thank God. High and lifted up. Why don't you stand, please? Jesus, Son of God. Michael, please come up here. Jesse, come with him. Please, Pastor, come with us. Please. Worthy is. The Bible says, This do in remembrance of me. That's what Jesus said. He didn't say this think. He said this do. What does it mean? It means relive the moment. Relive what took place on the cross. And as you play that beautiful melody, we're going to relive through communion. So lift up the bread. That's right there. Yeah. Just say, dear Jesus, I love you. And I thank you for dying for me and suffering for me and taking my place on Calvary's cross. I should have been crucified. I should have suffered and died. But you took my place. Thank you, Lord. And I do remember, Lord, your sufferings. I remember Gethsemane and the house of Caiaphas 
and the Pretoria and Golgotha. I remember when you cried, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? And I remember when you said, it is finished. Thank you, Lord. Your body was broken that my body might be made whole. And as I partake this bread, broken body, heal my body, even now. Let your mighty power flow through my body. Make me whole. Thank you, Lord. Partake by faith in Jesus' name, all of you. The bread. The body of the Lord Jesus in spirit. The treasure of heaven crucified. Worthy is the Lamb. Just for a moment now. Hallelujah, 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 Say, wonderful Jesus, I thank you for your blood, your shed blood. And I remember, Lord, your blood shed in Gethsemane, in the house of Caiaphas, in the Praetoria, and on Golgotha. Thank you, Lord for shedding your blood and giving your life for me. Thank you for redemption. And now I partake by faith. Cleanse me. Wash me. Make me whole. And by the power of your blood, just like you delivered Israel out of bondage, Deliver me now out of my bondage. Let this be my night of liberty. Let this be my moment of deliverance because of the blood. And I partake by faith. And I believe this is the beginning of victory in my life. In Jesus' name. Partake now by faith in Jesus' name. Worthy is the Lamb seated on the throne. Now lift your hands, receive your healing. Crown you now with many crowns. You reign victorious. High and lifted up. Receive your healing. Lift your hands and receive. Jesus, Son of God, the treasure of heaven, crucified. 
Someone to my left just felt heat go through your ears. You've had hard, a hard time hearing. The Lord is just clearing that. You that need a healing, just lift your hands, just receive. It's so simple to receive. I'm going to give the mic back to my son-in-law. And you sweet people, just lift your hands and thank God for healing you. You in your homes, if you need a healing tonight, just place your hand there on that part of your body by faith. Everybody here as well, if you need a healing, I just want you right here in the presence of the Lord just to take your hand. If you're with somebody who needs a healing, come into agreement with them. Father, in Jesus' name, we rebuke every sickness here. In the name of Jesus, every arthritis, every growth, every tumor, every cyst, every glaucoma, diabetes, go now in Jesus' name. You in your homes, be healed. Be healed of symptoms from the virus, all of these things. Go now in the name of Jesus. Be whole. Be whole. Stomach issues, intestinal issues, go in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. We thank you, Father. We thank you, Father. We thank you, Father. Say, Jesus, thank you for healing me. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Would you lift your hands to heaven? Jess, would you come here, babe? Thank you, Lord. If you felt a change in your body, I just want you to wave your hands. Just want you to wave, wave at me, yeah. Thank you, Lord, yeah, yeah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Come on, give the Lord praise. This is wonderful. Father, Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus. And if you if you were healed tonight, if you're you're, you're here here at the amphitheater, you're watching online. There's a wonderful anointing for healing. I want you to email or to text that number on your screen. I believe it's testimony or something to a certain number. What is it? Well, whatever. Text testimony to the number on your screen. It should come up here in a moment, or if you're in the crowd, do the same thing. Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you for your goodness. Now we ask for the fire of the Spirit to fall upon us, to carry the, the power of God to our families and to our cities. Babe, why don't you pray? Just release the power of the Spirit. Yeah, so uh, real quick before I pray, there was two things that, that God put on my heart. He's setting people free tonight from unforgiveness. There's many people in here, there's people watching online that you've been carrying the weight of unforgiveness for far too long. And Jesus wants to set you free tonight. He wants to give you his joy and his peace. So Jesus, right now, let's just pray together and, and just let's pray as a church, we are one. Lord, I just thank you, Jesus, that every person that's dealing with unforgiveness tonight, anyone dealing with bitterness, anyone dealing with shame, anyone dealing with hatred towards other people, Jesus, I thank you, Jesus, right now that you are setting them free in Jesus' name. Let every bit go right now in the name of Jesus. I thank you, Father, that they will laugh again. They will sing again. They will cry again, Jesus. Lord, that you will break down their hard hearts right now in Jesus' mighty name. Who the Son sets free is free indeed. And Jesus, I thank you, God, that you are setting your children free tonight in the name of Jesus, Lord. No more fear, no more bondage, no, no more anxiety, no more sleepless nights, no more fear of death, no more fear of finances, no more fear of the future, no more fear of marriage, no more fear of commitment in the name of Jesus, Lord. I thank you, Lord, you're restoring marriages tonight. In Jesus' name, you're restoring families, you're restoring mothers and daughters and fathers and sons in Jesus' name. I thank you, Holy Spirit, right now, baptize your children from the top of their head to the soles of their feet. In Jesus' name. Seal it, seal it, Jesus, seal it in Jesus' name. Lord, I thank you, Jesus, that as we leave, 
Not only will we be so aware of you, Jesus, and who you are, Lord, but that you will just give us a freedom. I just feel, guys, like he's gonna restore joy again in your household. He's gonna restore joy in your marriage. He's gonna restore joy with your children. He's gonna restore joy with your relationships. There's people in here that have you've been dealing with issues with your parents. You, Some of you haven't even talked to your mom or dad in years and years, your siblings. You've been going through just life with grudges and you're holding on to things that the Lord is asking you just to let it go and lay it at his feet because he wants to take that burden from you. So Lord, we just give it to you right now in Jesus' mighty name. We lay it at your feet, Lord, and I thank you, God, that you're restoring the joy in your children. In Jesus' name, amen. Lord, we ask that you will bless them. Seal it with the blood of Jesus. Amen. We love you. We're going to say good night. Thank you so much for being with us. And Ryan's going to fill you in on this weekend because we have more fun things coming. Yeah, so you guys, we have an amazing Easter Sunday service this Sunday at the Sheraton in Maitland. So we just wanted to remind you guys, as well as preview day on Monday for Jesus School. So if you guys are interested, you guys are here, you feel that God is calling you to Jesus School, Monday would be a beautiful day for you guys to come and see what we're all about. We love you guys. Thank you for coming. We'll see you this weekend. Have a good night. demonstrates his own love toward us and that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Jesus shed his blood. He died on the cross. He was buried. He rose again from the dead on the third day to give you life and to prove that he is the Son of God who he said he was. Today he is seated at the right hand of the Father. And for those who belong to him, he is interceding for them eternally. And that same Jesus will return again. He will crack the eastern sky like a whip. And with ten thousands upon ten thousands, he will return in glory. In 2017, we received a word from Lou Engle that we really believe is the word of the Lord for our school, our house, and the entire ministry. Lou said that the greatest musicians in the world and the greatest vocalists in the world, the greatest worshipers, that they would descend upon Orlando, Florida to Jesus' image. And that word began to burn in us, and we began to dream about what it would look like to one day have a school where people would come to worship Jesus and be in his presence and receive his word. And a church was birthed in that same worshiping atmosphere. And what a beautiful opportunity that we have as a Jesus people to come before him and to be at his feet and to pour ourselves out before him. Worship has the potential to unlock things that really nothing else in the world can unlock. And so we decided about a year ago to launch a, an opportunity within the Jesus School setting for those worshipers, for the musicians, for the singers, for the dancers, for the artists, for the poets. And this is going to be a place where you can come and you can learn and you can grow. And we have highly trained instructors who are going to be coming they're going to be teaching instruments. They're going to be teaching vocals. Anything that you can think of with worship, it's going to be there. The worship is not about us. We worship for Him. 
So we want to invite you to come, come worship the King of Kings with us. So come and be a part of what the Lord is doing. Come and give your heart to the Lord. Come and surrender yourself to the Lord. And let's be ones that are willing to rise and go. And we decided to name it after Bethany, that wonderful house where Jesus was ministered to, that place where the feelings of Jesus were preeminent. It was a place where he desired to not only move and work and teach and do wonderful things, but a place where he would be adored, a place where he would rest, a place where he would run to so that he would receive ministry. And so now Jesus School, has this space that's been created for all of you who are desiring to use your vocal gifts, your instrumental gifts, your gifts of worship, your dancing gifts, and give them to Jesus. That Jesus would make this a Bethany, that he'd make our lives a Bethany, where he'd come and rest and recline among us. You were created to experience the presence of God in a way that will transform your life, family, and the world. We understand how difficult it can be to find time to attend a school where you study the Word of God, grow in your faith, and build a community of believers. And that's why we created Jesus School Online. We believe that the Holy Spirit is unlimited in His reach. No matter where you live or what stage of life you're in, we invite you to take part in this amazing online opportunity. You'll be led by world-renowned speakers and worship leaders. You will be taught to seek Jesus daily, be activated in the power of the Holy Spirit, learn to share the gospel, and build community with Jesus people from around the world. At Jesus School Online, we are passionate about seeing a Jesus people raised up to shake the nations for the glory of God. You were created for this moment in history. The Jesus people are emerging and we have one ambition. Jesus himself. Will you join us?